when Jesus had be, had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. To just give you a little background about this, Jesus had just healed and delivered a boy who was possessed by a legion of demons. A legion means 6,000 demons. And when the people of that town came and saw this boy clothed and in his right mind, they were afraid of Jesus. And they asked him to leave. And that is why verse 21 says, Jesus went back across to the other side of the lake. And that is where Jairus, an official of the synagogue, he arrived there. He is not an ordinary person. He is a man of authority. How many of us who are in authority would leave their position, pride, ego, standard aside and come and fall at the feet of Jesus? He's an official of the local synagogue, like we have the church. What all thoughts must have come to his mind? What will the priest say? What will the high priest say? What will the chief priest say? What will the parish priest say? What will the people say? They will talk all sorts of things. They will say you left the church and you went for a private prayer meeting with the believers, with the Protestants, with the born agains. The people might say, look at this man. He serves in the synagogue and here he comes and falls at the feet of Jesus. What about us? What would we say? We all the time have the habit of criticizing others. If we have to go for a private prayer meeting or a Bible study or keep talking only the word of God, people make fun of us, talk all sorts of things about us. They call us believers and Protestants and born agains, etc. I remember when I went for Brother Johnson's meeting and I got addicted to the word, people spoke about me also. They call me a believer, born again, Protestant. They would tell my wife, my husband is gone. He has left the church. I would not bother about what people spoke about me because I knew the truth and the truth had set me free. Because Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 32, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The previous verse says, if you obey my teaching, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So all these thoughts must have come to Jairus. But look at this man of faith. He leaves his position, his prestige, his pride, his ego, his standard, everything he sets apart. And he comes and falls at the feet of Jesus. He is not only coming to Jesus, but he is falling at his feet. And why does he come here? Verse 23 says, He pleaded earnestly with him. Another translation says, he begged with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. He surely must have joined his hands and begged, pleaded in front of that big crowd. He did not care about what people would speak about him, what his own colleagues would say about him. How many times do we think 
before doing something good to someone? What will he say? What will she say? What will they think of me? They will laugh at me. They will make fun of me. They will ridicule me. They will insult me. Just to raise our hands or clap our hands while praying, singing and praising, we feel shy. What will he say? What will she say? What will they think of me? If we feel shy about all these things, how can we then go and share the good news to others if we can't do such simple things? Many times, even when people are told to close their eyes, many are adamant and they keep their eyes open. I used to sometimes be on the camera. And whenever Brother Johnson would say, let's close our eyes. And he would make a prayer. I would be rolling the camera. But I would see so many people with their eyes wide open, wanting to see what is going on. Why did he tell us to close the eyes? And what does Jairus beg Jesus for? He says, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. Now, how many of us, if our child is not well, would leave the child at home and go to church or kneel down and pray? The child is about to die. Jairus is an official. He must be a rich man. He can afford to bring the best doctors. Don't we also do that? If our child is not well, we take him or her to the best doctors, give him the best treatment, the best facilities. And we will also use our, all our influence. Some of those who have political in, uh, influence will call up the ministers or the corporators. Jairus could have also done it. He must have had a lot of influence apart from money. But look at him. He leaves everything and goes to Jesus and falls at his feet and begs with him to come and lay hands on her daughter. Surely he must have heard a lot about Jesus. And that is the reason why his faith grew. And faith grew so much that he left everything and he came to Jesus. Because faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. And praise God, we Christians have hardly heard the, about Jesus. How many times from childhood to now, we have been hearing and hearing about Jesus. But did we ever walk in such faith? We were ignorant. Yes, we know about Jesus. We know he's a healer. We know that he performs miracles. We have faith. We pray. In the past, if anyone had to come to me to share the good news, I would put them down. Though I did not know anything from the Bible, I would argue with them, get into discussions with them. And I would see that they lose the fight. They lose the argument. But little did I know, it was I who had lost on the blessings all these years. Today, when I have to look behind, I see how much I have lost in life by arguing with people. The people with whom I argued shrugged me off and kept rising higher and higher while I remained in the pit. So we need to stop getting into arguments. We need to stop feeling offended and also offending others. We need to start hearing the word of God and put it into practice and see how blessings will flow into our lives. Now, when we share the good news to others, some people may oppose us. They might start arguing with us and discussing with us. I know a person who questioned me with what authority or whose authority I'm going around spreading the gospel, going to the hospitals, etc. He asked me, which ministry do you belong to? He told me, you have to 
take permission from the church. You have to be a part of the hospital or prison ministry or gospel ministry. So I told him, I'm from Jesus' ministry. And he has given me this authority in Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. He has given me the power of attorney in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. And he has said in John 14, 12, the things that I have done, you can also do. And greater things than this, you shall do. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It is we who do not know the authority that has been given to us. And that is why we fail to walk the walk of faith. We say we have faith, but then we doubt. Will it work? What if it doesn't happen? What will people think about me? People will make fun of me. I was like that. I would feel shy. I would, I would always doubt. I would question, I would reason. Will it work? What if it doesn't happen? What will people think about me? People will make fun of me. But one day, I found a scripture. And this scripture built me in so much of faith. This scripture says in Romans chapter 10 verse 11, anyone not only the preachers and the priests and the pastors, anyone who believes in Jesus will never be put to shame. When I read this, I said, wow. I rejoiced at that and said, Lord, if you have said that, you will not put me to shame. I trust you. I believe you because you are not a liar. And because you have said this, I'm going to go and lay my hands on the sick. God is not a liar. He's not a son of man. He's not a man. He's true to his word. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Then again, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is a faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Again, Isaiah 54 verse 10 says, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. And 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 says, No matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the Amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. And that was the first time after I read this, I said, Lord, I will never doubt you. Give me one more chance and I will lay my hands on the sick. I'm ready to exercise my faith. Then there was no turning back. I not only laid hands, I went to the hospitals and people were healed. I even got to cast out demons in three cases. You believe in the authority that Jesus has given you and you will see yourselves walking in faith. So let's see what happens to Jairus. Verse 24. Then Jesus asked Jairus, which parish do you belong to? You are not from my parish. Bring your parish support card. Bring an NOC from your parish priest. Then I will come with you. Did Jesus question Jairus or say anything of that sort? I'm not criticizing the priest. 
I have always been among the priests and nuns and brothers from the seminary. So I know all that used to happen there. In Dubai it does not happen because there is only one parish. In India we have so many parishes. Did Jesus speak anything like this? What does Jesus say? The verse 24 says, Jesus went with him. Jesus went with him. So many people were going along with Jesus that they were crowding him from every side. Look at the faith of Jairus. Jesus is leaving the whole crowd and going with Jairus. That crowd must have been with Jesus for a long time. Most of them must have come before Jairus. And instead of attending to them, Jesus is going with Jairus who has just come. What would we do if we were in the place of the crowd? I remember when we were small, we would stand in a queue for ration or for kerosene. If somebody had to enter the line in the middle, we would fight with them and tell them to go behind. Does the crowd say to Jairus, hey, where are you taking Jesus? We are here from morning. Do you think we are fools over here? We have no work. Get behind us. You just came and you are taking Jesus with you. Nobody says anything. Jesus must have also seen his faith. A man of authority coming and falling at his feet. Begging for his daughter's life. He did not go to the doctors but came straight to him. And now he is walking with Jairus to his house. And see what happens. Verse 25. And a, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she had yet instead of getting better she grew worse when she heard about jesus she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak now a person who's suffering terribly from severe bleeding for 12 years, will she be strong or weak? If we go for blood donation, after giving just one bottle of blood, we become weak. And imagine this lady is suffering from severe bleeding for 12 long years. What must be her condition? The Bible says this weak woman came in the crowd behind him. Is it easy? Is it possible? What must have been the size of the crowd? Once Jesus fed 4,000 people, another time he fed 5,000 people, not counting the women and children. If we are to guess what the crowd was like, we can just imagine 5,000 men and in those days men would have many wives but for ease of calculation we take two wives per man so 5,000 men 10,000 women total 15,000 men and women and in those days they had children in dozens but for ease of calculation we just take two children per woman so 15,000 women into two 30,000, oh sorry, 10,000 women into two, 20,000 children, 15,000 men and women, total 35,000 people. Is it a small crowd? They all must have been very kind, humble and gentle that they let this lady go through to Jesus. Like us, when we go for a movie and stand for tickets and somebody gets in the queue in front of us, we will surely not say anything and let that person go. 
right? Is it possible for this lady to go through the midst of the crowd? She is weak. She has been suffering for 12 years. Then how did she get through the crowd? Verse 28 says, because she thought, another translation says, the original English translation says, she kept saying to herself, she kept saying to herself, she kept on saying to herself, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. If I just touch the hem of his garments, I will be healed. If I just touch the hem of his garments, I will be healed. She kept on saying. She kept saying and saying and saying to herself. And as she kept saying to herself, the walls were broken. The obstacles were removed and the road to Jesus opened in front of her. In the same way, when we open our mouths and keep saying the scriptures again and again and again, all obstacles that are blocking our blessings are removed. The walls are broken and we can not only touch the garment of Jesus, but Jesus himself. Because Jesus is in us. Verse 29. Immediately her bleeding stopped. And she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. She just touched the cloak of Jesus, the hem of Jesus' garment. She believed that if she could just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, she would be healed. And what she believed, she received. Do you know that your garments are anointed? Even if your garment has to touch a sick person, that person has to be healed. Paul's handkerchief was laid on the sick and they were healed. When Peter's shadow fell on sick people, they were healed. On my YouTube channel, there is a testimony of a Sri Lankan air hostess who got her healing when the jacket of another colleague of hers who was in the word of God was put upon her. So if you believe that you are anointed, then your hands are anointed and also your garments are anointed. You don't have to worry whether it will work or not. You just do it. When you take one step, Jesus takes the remaining steps. But do we do that? We are stuck with our reasoning. Will it work? What if it does not work? What will people say? People will speak anyways. We are not supposed to be in people's bondage. We just need to do it. We need to take that first step of faith and see how God works through us. Now many will say, just as the woman touched his cloak, the hem of Jesus' garment, I will also say, only if I touch the hem of Jesus' garment, only if I touch the picture frame of Jesus or statue of Jesus or the rosary or the Bible, then I will be healed. That is wrong. That time Jesus was physically present and so she went and touched his garment. Today Jesus is inside of us. He dwells in us. He is not in the picture frame or the statues, but he is inside of us. And when he is inside of us, the Bible says the wholeness of God is in us. We are his holy temple. It is not that it is wrong to touch the pictures and statues of Jesus, Mary or the saints. They are just to remind us about them and the lives that they have lived. They have lived exemplary lives and now we are supposed to live lives like them. And not make them our gods. 
they lived lives of obedience to the word of god are we living a life of obedience are we living a life that jesus lived all these years we have left jesus the word of god aside and we were making the pictures and statues our god let's see what the bible says about the fullness of christ colossians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 for in christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form and in christ you have been brought to fullness he is the head over every power and authority so kissing the bible picture frame statues does not help but the word of god when you study it when you meditate upon it day and night that word becomes flesh in you and dwells in you just like mother mary when she heard the word of god from angel gabriel she believed it she accepted it she said yes to god's plan that was when the word became flesh in her womb and dwelt amongst us and that word is jesus so when we have the word of god in our hearts we have jesus in us and when jesus is in us his wholeness is in us and when his wholeness is in us can any sickness disease problem worry virus come to us that is why we say we are the body of christ satan sickness you have no power no place in us again 1 corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 and 20 says do you not know do you not know that your bodies are the temples of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have received from god you are not your own you are bought at a price therefore honor god with your bodies this scripture has helped me to stop drinking when i realized that my body is the temple of god i stopped drinking when i realized that god dwells in me and he cannot stand anything sinful anything dirty i stopped drinking today if you believe that your body is the temple of god and god dwells in you can you defile your body smoking drinking tattooing sexual immorality is all against the body which is the temple of god if you take the scripture from verse 18 you will understand that mark chapter 5 verse 30 at once at once jesus realized that power had gone out from he turned around in the crowd and asked who touched my clothes you see the people crowding against you his disciples answered and yet you can ask who touched me but jesus kept looking around to see who had done it if we were in the place of the disciples we also would have replied to jesus the same way isn't it i for sure would have said hey jesus come on what are you asking who touched me can't you see this crowd 35000 40000 people pushing against you and you're asking who touched you the disciples also spoke in the same way but jesus knew what had happened because power had gone out of him so many times i have laid my hands on the sick i did not feel any power going out of me but jesus felt the power go out of his body 
this does not mean that the, the person on whom I laid hands did not get their healing. I have seen so many people get their healings. The power that goes out through our hands is not ours, but the power of Jesus. And that is why we do not feel it. But when we, by faith, lay our hands on the sick, Jesus feels the power go out from him. And that person receives his healing. If God has said he will never put you to shame, he will surely not put you to shame. He has said when you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. You just do the laying of hands, he will do the rest. Verse 33. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet. And trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. The woman realized that she had been healed and now she would be caught for stealing her healing. She had stolen her healing. Jesus did not heal her. She is not even supposed to be in the city or in the crowd. A person who is suffering with bleeding, that person is declared unclean. And that person has to stay outside the city in isolation, quarantined, as we would call it today. They are not supposed to mix with people. And if they come close to people, they could be stoned to death. And here she is not only in the crowd, but she has touched a man of God. And that is why she is scared and she is trembling because she has been caught. She kneels in front of Jesus and confesses. She tells her 12-year-old long story to Jesus. And Jesus is listening to her patiently. Verse 34. Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Does Jesus say, my daughter, your crying has healed you? Your sad story of 12 years has healed you? He said, your faith has made you well. Your faith has healed you. Go in peace. And be freed from your suffering. How many times we are just crying, complaining, grumbling, murmuring, speaking about our problems to Jesus. We need to stop crying, complaining, grumbling, murmuring and speaking about our problems to Jesus and start walking in faith. We need to put our faith to work and then see how the Lord works in our lives. The woman was already healed when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. But when she opened her mouth and confessed, when she testified about what had happened to her, Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. She had already received her healing. The original translation says, Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Whole means complete. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. So every time we open our mouths and speak and tell people. When we testify of what God has done in our lives. We not only receive our healings. We become whole. There is nothing missing. Nothing broken in our lives. That is why it is very important that we share our testimonies with people and give glory to God. Now while all this is happening, poor Jairus must have felt neglected. He must have felt ignored. His daughter is dying. He needs to take Jesus to his home urgently. And here Jesus is wasting his time. He's doing time pass. 
He wants to know who touched him. Come on, Jesus. There is a big crowd around you. So many people touching you. Don't bother about it. Come with me. My daughter is dying. He could have been upset. He could have got agitated. But he is not impatient. How many times when our prayers are not answered immediately, we get worried, we get impatient, we begin complaining, grumbling and murmuring. We even abandon God and say, there is no God. We curse God, we say all sorts of things to God. Jairus could have cursed the lady. He had the authority to order the woman to be stoned to death. Because she not only came into the crowd, but also touched Jesus. Now the lady has received her healing and yet Jesus is doing time pass with the lady. Listening to her 12 year old long story. Come on Jesus, she is healed. Leave her now. Let's go. My daughter is dying. Come on Jesus. We need to go, hurry. What all thoughts would have come to, his, to us if we were in Jairus' place? How impatient we would have become. Let's see what happens while all this is taking place. Verse 35. While Jesus was still speaking, while Jesus was still speaking to this lady, some people came from the house of Jairus the synagogue leader, your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? If we were in the place of Jairus, what would have happened to us? Our world would have come crashing down on us. We would have turned the world upside down. Jesus, I left everything and came to you in faith. You wasted time with that woman. You wanted to listen to her 12 year old long story, sad story. Now see what happened. Because of you, I lost my daughter. It's your fault. My daughter died because of you. Wouldn't we have said that? But even before Jairus could react, look at Jesus' reaction, verse 36. Overhearing. Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. Other translation says, Jesus heard. Another translation says, Jesus overheard. Another translation says, Jesus paid no attention. Yet another translation says, Jesus ignored. How many times people have come and given us the wrong messages, said all sorts of things to us, hurt us, offended us. Doctors have given us bad reports and we have accepted what they have said and meditated upon it continually and brought death and destruction upon ourselves. Jesus is showing by example that we are supposed to ignore, we are supposed to pay no attention to words of the world, but pay attention only to his word. For his words are spirit and life. But what do we choose to hear and meditate upon? Words of Jesus or words of the world? Jesus said, don't be afraid, only believe. We want to do everything, but no believing. We get afraid as soon as we receive a bad news or report. Today, Jesus is telling each one of us, don't be afraid, only believe. Whatever you choose to hear and meditate, you will receive it. Verse 37. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, 
Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. Imagine Jairus' frustration now. First that lady delayed them. Then Jesus waited to listen to her long story. Then his servants came bringing the bad news. And now they have reached the house. And he sees everyone crying and wailing. He can see that his daughter has really died. He can see the physical situation. Yet he is patient. He is trusting Jesus because he has said, don't be afraid, only believe. When we see our situations, are we at rest? Are we patient like Jairus? Or are we worried, scared? We need to stand strong, trust him. He is not with us like he was with Jairus, but he is in us. And he has the control, the situation under our, his control. And to add salt to the wounds, Jesus puts all his family members out of the house. Who do you think must have gathered in Jairus' house? All his near and dear ones, relatives, synagogue officials, and Jesus is putting them all out of his house. What would you feel? Hey, Jesus, stop. Enough is enough. I trusted you. I came to you. I begged you to heal my daughter. But because of your delay, my daughter died. And on top of it, now you are putting my family members out of the house. Who do you think you are? But look at Jairus. Patient. He does not lose his patience. He does not get upset. He does not become hyper. He trusted in Jesus. He kept his school and let Jesus do his work. He just believed that God would do what he has promised to do. How many times God wants to work in our lives, but we mess up everything by opening our mouths. We want to do it our way. We think our ways are better than God's ways. But look at the faith of Jairus. He is not interfering in the way that Jesus is dealing. He keeps his mouth shut and lets Jesus do his work. So Jesus took the child's father and mother and his three disciples and went into the room where the child was laying. Verse 41. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. What if Jairus had to open his mouth would he have received his daughter back? How many times have we lost our blessings, healings and miracles because of our impatience? How many times have we lost our blessings by opening our mouth? We could have prevented the loss of blessings by guarding our mouths. Can we make a decision today? No matter what our situations are, we will guard our mouths. We will speak only words that are in line with the word of God. Let's close our eyes for the final prayer. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for teaching us about the faith and patience of Jairus. Thank you for teaching us about the faith and courage of the woman with the issue of blood. 
Lord, you said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. Lord, we have been hearing your word right from our childhood. But yet, we have not been built up in faith. Like Jairus and the woman with the issue of blood. Lord, help us to change our words, to change our thinking, to change our mindsets. And speak words in line with your words. Let us not speak about our problems, but speak to our problems. For you, O Lord, have given us the power and authority to speak to the mountains and storms in our lives. And it shall obey us. Lord, help us to be like Jairus, who patiently waited while you were talking to the woman with the issue of blood. He did not panic when he got the news of his daughter's death, but he trusted in your word. Don't be afraid, only believe. Today, O oh Lord, we choose to trust your word and believe that what you have said, you will surely bring it to completion. You, O oh Lord, are true to your word. What you have promised, you will surely do it. Lord, today we lift up to you all the people who are affected with this COVID virus, whatever variant it is. Lord, we do not belong to this world, but we have been chosen out of this world. Greater is Jesus who is in us than this virus that is in the world. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, for our righteousness is of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that everything that you created was very good. But when you created man, you said it is very good. Thank you, Lord, that every organ, every tissue of our bodies are functioning to the perfection to which you have created it to function. And we forbid any malfunction in our bodies in the name of Jesus. Every disease, every germ, every virus that has touched our bodies dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing, all those who are not well. The Lord is touching you. He's not only touching you, he is inside of you. And when he is inside of you, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No sickness can remain in your body. No disease can touch your body. No virus can stand before the one who is the creator of all heaven and earth. He is greater than everything. Thank you, Lord, for having touched each and every person. We thank you in advance, O oh Lord, for you have said, whatever we ask for in prayer, believe that we have received it and it will be ours. We believe, O oh Lord, that every person who is touched with any kind of sickness, any kind of disease, any kind of virus is healed right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Mm. So, any testimonies? I would like to share something. Yeah. Uh, this was my friend who called me from Delhi. Okay. Delhi is badly affected with this uh, corona, this Om Omicron. Omicron. Okay. Omicron. So I said a night, evening, he called me and told me that I am, I am, and the doctor has told that I've got all the uh, symptoms of Omicron. My choke is, uh, my, my throat is getting choked. I'm getting feverish. I'm getting uh, weak and all these things. So he kept on telling me, I said, yeah, 
stop stop don't tell me all that things can i pray for you sir then he said okay you pray he thought i you know i wanted to pray aside i said i want to talk to you on the phone on the phone i want to pray to you and i took your your uh, scripture which you said na the lord will not put me to shame with that confidence yes, and sir. with the authority given to me you know authority given in luke 10:19 i just said a simple prayer lord in your name i drive out that sickness there is no sign and he said tomorrow i am getting the result morning so i said lord he will go to the doctor and the doctor will say it is negative praise god and today morning he called me up at 7 and said i mean 8 8 8 30 something and he said are the doctor said it is negative there is no problem with this and i said praise god praise god i just left thank you praise jesus god. praise, praise god. yeah and yesterday we also prayed uh, brother cecil had brought a drunkard uh-huh. a 20 years old uh, boy who was you know uh, binded with this uh, alcohol okay so he had been here so we my granddaughter prayed over him lay hands and prayed for him and uh, we believe that he is already healed amen so it was uh, god uh, really thankful to god Praise that god. he keeps his word amen yeah. and you are i use your own people he will not put anybody to shame so <laughs> i give it back to god so you said you will not put me to shame so i am praying in your name Praise so god. it was done Praise god. God. anyone else any questions any doubts <coughs> all are blessed god in this new year everybody is blessed yes we are blessed no weapon formed against you shall prosper no sickness no disease mm-hmm. no virus can touch you in the name of jesus yeah. amen. amen 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 he is a god who will never put us to shame what we believe he will surely bring it to pass amen yes. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yeah. And we are continuing on the same topic of faith. For the next two, three weeks, we'll be doing studying on faith. And I, <coughs> and I believe that you will all be built up in faith in this coming year, mm. and will be yes. able to withstand. Yes. 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 Satan and will be works. Laying everyone. Amen. Laying. Yes. We'll go out laying hands. Amen, amen. You will be going up and laying hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Because Jesus, we are not Catholic without hands, na. So uh, we have to lay hands. We have to lay hands. Brother Johnson, we have got to. So we have to lay. <laughs> yeah, brother. What is the what is the verse for laying hands? Mark sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Mark sixteen. Okay. My name. You will drive off the those who believe. You will pick up yeah, you your pick hands them. when you drink deadly mm. poison. It will not hurt you at all. You will lay okay. hands to the sick, and they shall. Very go. powerful. Word. Okay. Very powerful promise. This promise was I used for the drunkard while before praying. <laughs> okay. Anybody? Yeah, brother. Ha, uh, brother. One, uh, one uh, revelation. Yeah. today we spoke about the faith right jesus tells in the bible your faith has healed and uh, like now all of that mm-hmm. but in the new covenant because we are not praying for the victory mm-hmm. uh, but we are play, uh, we are praying uh, like uh, from the place of victory because jesus has gone to the place right. of victory right. yeah mm-hmm. so uh, so It's we don't have we pray for correct, correct. victory so, yeah correct for the place of the victory so most of the time what we do is we like now uh, pray Uh, like na we pray we have faith on jesus now don't no doubt we need to have faith on jesus but we don't remember that we have faith of jesus as a born again christian he each one of ha uh, as a born again christian each one of us has the faith of jesus, of jesus. now which is the scripture that says that is galatians 220 hmm. So that is a very important uh, revelation, brother. Jesus Himself said, oh, yeah. "Because whatever I have done, you can also do, uh, and greater correct. things than these you shall do, because I correct. go to the Father." Yeah, because most of the time we wonder, we pray, we we have faith, and we wonder things don't work out, and then we get very uh, demotivated, and uh, they are like, "Are probably." my faith is not as good as what jesus's faith was here or that preacher 
or brother pastor yeah. or brother thomas uh, their faith is probably is good they do good works they arrange all the seminars retreats they read word of god so probably their faith is good but the it's for the revelation of the people that we need to have like na faith of jesus and 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 as accepting jesus as a lord and savior of our life we get the faith of jesus amen we have the fullness of god in us no the fullness of god is in us correct what dwells yes. in us and it is god who works through us yeah exactly and we have been crucified with christ and no longer we who live we who live yeah. but christ who dwells in us so what it, what it means is that when the see brother, brother thomas what you said that's very important because when the world was created jesus was there with abba father correct it says the trinitarian mm-hmm. god was there it's the father mm-hmm. son and the spirit was there jesus and the spirit which means mm-hmm. when we are part of jesus and the body of jesus we were part of the creation the story of creation in a, when jesus is walking with this uh, lady with 12 years blood uh, issue and uh, with jairus we were there with jesus well, in spirit so that is a very deep meaning actually yeah. uh, what you said to the lawrence uh, So, which you said was you know before i formed you in the womb i, I knew you and before you were born i set you apart praise god and i appointed you to be a prophet to the nations I before yeah 15 jeremiah 5 such a beautiful uh, promise i mean we are all prophets amen we are supposed to go out and lay hands and pray and preach amen so 2022 the there are a lot of prophets going to come out and step out into yeah, the world god. hallelujah and preach the hallelujah world. hallelujah i think we are going to have a we are going to have a uh, i think uh, as brother johnson says no we are not prayer warriors but we are faith warriors, faith warriors. and i think yeah. under under the guidance and uh, this thing of like na the holy spirit working so mir- mightily in, uh, and speaking to us to brother pascal all of us yeah. we are going to be mighty prophets Amen. like na mighty uh, the mighty Warriors. like na uh, going to be as prosperous or like the kings hmm? and anyways we are the high priest of our own families amen so all the bible amen. prophecies are going to come to pass amen amen so thank you brother pascal for keeping